Olivia, thanks for joining me this Thursday. I'm Azmina Nadri, and these are tonight's headlines. Works Minister tops MACC's monthly earnings chart. Couple found brutally hacked to death. And black box believed to be from doomed plane retreat. Now we begin tonight's bulletin with this story. Police have suspended seven of its personnel over the alleged disappearance of 7.9 million ringgit belonging to an investor during a search on September 8th at his condominium unit in Jalan Yutan, Kuala Lumpur. Inspector General of Police Tanshri Muhammad Fuzi Harun said the action was taken following police investigations into the case. He also said the completed investigation papers have been handed over to the Public Prosecutor's Office for the next course of action. Kita tunggu apa yang arahan lanjut daripada pihak DPP lah terhadap uh, semua mereka yang terlibat. Dan uh, tindakan jabatan juga telah diambil kepada pegawai-pegawai yang terlibat. Walaupun tidak uh, secara keseluruhannya, tapi yang dah pasti itu kita dah ambil tindakan jabatan. To date, only seven police officers and personnel have been suspended. In September, the investi the investor involved alleged that the amount mentioned went missing after the search was conducted at his condominium unit by police from the narcotics department of the Kuala Lumpur Police Contingent Headquarters. At the time, the 50-year-old investor was said to be in Jakarta, Indonesia. Meanwhile, the top cop also said police will look into a claim by former Petro Saudi International Limited executive Xavier Andre Justo that he was forced to openly declare that former Prime Minister Datuk Sri Najib Tun Razak is a good man and the best PM while being questioned in Bangkok three years ago. Saya akan melihat apa ni dakwaan dakwaan ni buat dan saya maklum bahawa mungkin perkara ini ada kaitan dengan statement yang diambil di Bangkok oleh Sri Najib. On June 22, 2015, Justo was arrested at his home in Koh Samui, Thailand for attempting to blackmail his former employer to the tune of 11 million ringgit pertaining to documents he obtained from the company. Currently in Malaysia to attend a forum, Justo yesterday said Malaysian authorities met him while he was in custody of Thai police, claiming that among those who met him were Bukit Aman's Commercial Crimes Investigation Department head, Datuk Sri Amar Singh Ishar Singh. Justo alleged that he was made to confess that he was a thief who manipulated data and was working with a politician within Malaysia's then opposition with the help of a reporter. He was also asked to acknowledge that the deal between Petro Saudi and One Malaysia Development Berhad, One MDB, was valid and just. Now, in the meantime, the Public Accounts Committee, PAC, was shown damning evidence in its recent meeting over the 1MDB scandal that involved documents that had allegedly been tampered with. The findings, if true, may change the course of the PAC probe into the case. Now, according to a report by the New Straits Times, the PAC members were shown two sets of documents, with one containing parts of the missing pieces. The first was the original 106-page PAC report, which had cleared former Prime Minister Datuk Sri Najib Tun Raza of any wrongdoing. PAC members were also told that five individuals had allegedly tweaked the report that then-Auditor General Tan Sri Amrin Buang signed off on. Highly placed sources also told the Daily that the PAC had been made aware of who the five individuals are. Among them is said to be an insider with the Auditor General's office, a former high-ranking officer with 1MDB, and an officer who walked the corridors of the former Prime Minister's office. It was also learned that the former Premier, his wife and Joe Lowe's names have resurfaced in the report in ways that are not favourable to them. 
Now, the MACC has published the asset declaration among parliamentarians and government administrators on its asset declaration portal. Works Minister Barubian tops the chart in terms of monthly earnings with 108,056 ringgit. He had declared his income together with that of his wife. Next comes Lim Guan Eng and wife with combined monthly earnings of 86,464 ringgit and 92 sen. Prime Minister Tunok Tamahadi Muhammad and wife's earnings of 75,861 ringgit. Excuse me. 75,861 ringgit and 57 sen put them in fourth place. As for his deputy and outgoing PKR president, Datuk Sri Dr. Wan Aziza Wan Ismail and Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim, they are in the 11th spot with total monthly earnings at 59,048 ringgit and 33 sen. Youth and Sports Minister Said Sadiq Said Abdul Rahman, who is the youngest cabinet minister, declared an earning of 50,253 ringgit. To date, 47 government parliamentarians have declared their assets, while 76 have yet to do so. As for government administrators, 20 have declared their assets, while 29 have yet to do so. Information on the portal is still being updated. Now in other news, in Johor, two people were found brutally hacked to death in a double murder case at a flat in Taman Unku Tun Amina, Johor Bahru today. Police are investigating the case from all angles to identify the motive of the murder. State Deputy Police Chief Datuk Muhammad Kamardin Mat Din said the attack was believed to have taken place at about midnight. The victims were identified as K. Kamala, age 51, and her male partner, 59-year-old S. Silvaraja. Both were found sprawled in blood in their third floor unit at 9 a.m. by Kamala's daughter, who just came back from work in Singapore at around 9 a.m. today. Initial investigation revealed that both the incident there before the incident, there was a commotion which lasted 10 minutes. The victims were believed to have been hacked by a sharp weapon on their heads, while the male victim had a gash on his neck. Kita percayai suspek sekurang-kurangnya dua orang ataupun lebih dan uh, uh, sesatan uh, di tempat kejadian uh, kita mendapati, uh, kita percayai lah bangsa ini uh, mengenali suspek yang terlibat. He also said investigators were probing if the murders were related to revenge or bad debts. Kamala's cash and jewellery were also reported missing. Police have initiated investigations under the penal code for murder. The bodies were sent to the Sultana Amina Hospital for a post-mortem examination. Now, also in Johor Bahru, police have seized more than 60 kilograms of drugs worth 3.1 million ringgit in two separate raids on Tuesday and Wednesday. Datuk Muhammad Kamardian said that a 48-year-old Malaysian was also arrested during the operation. In the first raid at Taman Desa Chemerlang, 58.79 kilograms of ketamine drugs were seized from a Toyota Camry car. In the second raid, cops seized 5.44 kilograms of heroin and 2.34 kilograms of shabu from a Produa Kambara car at Jalan Permatang Lapan in Desa Jaya. The amount of drugs seized would have been enough to supply 20,000 addicts. Police also seized both cars and are trying to identify the source of the drugs as well as determine whether it's meant for the local or international market. The suspect has been remanded for seven days until Tuesday to facilitate investigations under the Dangerous Drugs Act. Now, the Cabinet Committee for a Health Promoting Environment today agreed that an excise tax be introduced for its sugary and carbonated drinks. However, the proposal would be discussed at the next Cabinet meeting first before it can be finalised. Deputy Prime Minister Datuk Sri Dr. Wan Azizah Wan Ismail, who chairs the committee, revealed the matter after a meeting attended by representatives from 12 ministries in Putrajaya today. Dia belum lagi diperincikan, tapi kita um, nak, nak bawa kepada kabinet dan Menteri Keuangan akan uh, memperhalusinya dan bagaimanakah wang yang dikutip itu mungkin pergi kepada satu dana nak menolong untuk memperbaiki kesihatan ataupun wang disatukan. Ini mesti diperincikan dengan lebih uh, teliti lagi. Yes. Tapi disetujui oleh semua kerajaan. 
Datuk Sri Dr. Wan Aziza, who is also Women, Family and Community Development Minister, added that such excise tax is already being implemented in several neighboring countries, including Brunei, Thailand and the Philippines. In fact, the implementation has been proven successful in Mexico in its bid to promote healthy living among its people. At today's meeting, 12 policies were agreed, including to compel ministries and departments to choose weight management programs and provide healthy food at workplace cafeterias, including at institutions of higher learning. At another event, Datuk Sri Dr. Wan Aziza highlighted that tourism industry players must be creative to compete on the global stage and win the hearts of travellers in choosing Malaysia as a destination of choice. The Deputy Prime Minister said growing the country's tourism industry also requires a partnership between the government and the private sector as they must have strategic plans in place in order to cater to and pique the interests of foreign guests from different parts of the world. While well, the government can plan strategies to strengthen Malaysia's position as a dynamic tourism destination, tourism industry players must also play their part in embracing innovative tourism products towards achieving this ambition. She also stressed that in the present digital age, Malaysia can no longer promote the country's tourism potential through traditional means. Social media, home sharing sites and mobile apps are just some of the more creative and proactive means of promoting Malaysia's tourism products that must be expanded upon. Last year, the tourism sector was the second largest foreign exchange earner for the country with 25.9 million tourist arrivals and 82.2 billion ringgit in tourism revenue. Now on to the day one right yet sitting. The government is confident it can implement the 1,500 ringgit minimum wage within five years. Members of parliament were informed that the uniformed minimum wage of 1,050 ringgit expected to be rolled out in January 2019 could also be reviewed annually despite the provision stated in the National Wages Consultative Council Act 2011 that provides for a biannual review. Deputy Human Resource Minister Datuk Mahfuz Omar told the August House that the government is aware that the 1,050 ringgit rate is not too high, but added that it is a rational approach to avert a sudden rise in the operating costs of employers, especially in the small and medium industries. Memang uh, majlis uh, gaji, majlis perundingan gaji negara uh, memberikan nasihat. Uh, namun uh, sudah tentu bahawa akhirnya keputusan itu seperti yang diamalkan sebelum ini uh, kabinet sendiri yang akan membuat keputusan yang akhir, eh, yang 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 mutamad. Jadi sudah tentu uh, kabinet sendiri melihat kepada beberapa perkara yang uh, penting uh, untuk diberikan pertimbangan uh, yang sewajar. He also said the setting of a uniformed minimum wage for the whole country is to bridge the socio-economic gap between Sabah, Sarawak and the federal territory of Labuan with the states in the peninsula. The government also took into account the slower national economic growth at 4.5% in the second quarter of this year compared to 5.4% in the first quarter. Presently, the minimum wage in Peninsula Malaysia is 1,000 ringgit a month, while Sabah and Sarawak and the Federal Territory of Labuan at 920 ringgit a month. In another matter, the MPs were told that the government has not finalised the amount of compensation to be paid to the Armed Forces Fund Board, LTAT, for the cost of acquiring two companies involved in the Automated Enforcement System, AES. This despite discussion between the Transport Ministry, the Finance Ministry, the Attorney General's Chambers, AGC and LTAT have been made three times. Kerajaan masih lagi dalam proses meneliti jumlah pampasan yang telah dituntut oleh pihak syarikat. Dalam perbincangan yang terkini pada 26 Oktober 2018, semua pihak telah bersetuju supaya tuntutan akhir daripada LTAT dipanjangkan kepada Kementerian Keuangan untuk diteliti secara terperinci. 
He added that the finance ministry will then propose a solution and the whole process is expected to be finalized by the end of this year. On August 24th, Transport Minister Anthony Loke reportedly said that the government was only willing to pay back the capital of 555 million ringgit to LTAT as the current government was not tied up to agreements between the board and the previous Barisan National Government. Now when we come back, Malaysia moves up in global business rankings. The details coming right up. Welcome back. Now let's take a look at clickbait for what's trending and making rounds in the cyber world today. So recently, a urinological doctor by the name of Jalina Ain posted on Facebook asking people to send her pictures of little girls with genital problems so that she can provide her medical opinion. However, the account was believed to be fake and the bogus doctor might actually be a pedophile. This was exposed after a Facebook user, Shakila Nordin, did some digging and found the truth about the sketchy doctor. According to Shakila, she was curious of the Facebook user's intention to ask questions on the social media platform. Surprisingly, many parents responded to the post, sharing personal details of their kids without really knowing who they are sharing it with. Some even asked for permission to personally contact the doctor for advice. After going through the doctor's Facebook wall, Shakila finally found evidence that proved her suspicion and took a screenshot of a post showing a picture of a vagina that was meant for educational purposes, but the caption read, so good. After Shakila's post went viral with more than 6.2 thousand shares, the doctor deactivated her Facebook account. So parents, do be careful with what you share online, especially involving your kids. Now updated as of 7 p.m., here are the top trending topics and searches on the internet today. Now Malaysia has moved up to the 15th position in the World Bank Group's Doing Business 2019 ranking from 24th in the previous year. World Bank said this was due to the six business reforms implemented. The acceleration in reforms covered the doing business areas of starting a business, dealing with construction permits, getting electricity, registering property, trading across borders and resolving insolvency six reforms which were um, resulted in sort of the dramatic increase of the score the overall doing business score this year and that has led to the increase the jump in the rankings um, from 24 to 15 so it's the result of the reforms that were captured in this previous cycle for doing business 2019 the World Bank Group senior economist said this at a media conference in Kuala Lumpur today. The bank also noted that Malaysia's consistent efforts to adopt international regulatory best practices has made this achievement possible. It also said it is committed to sustaining its support for the important reform agenda going forward with a focus on areas where entrepreneurs still experience difficulties. Finance Minister Lim Guan Eng is set to table the 2019 budget in Parliament tomorrow, the first under the Pakatan Harapan government. The tabling of the budget is probably a much-awaited event as the public is eager to see a more prudent budget arrangement by the new federal government. This as the country has been facing various fiscal challenges. Prior to this, Lim was reported to have admitted that the budget will be a difficult one for the federal government. Prime Minister Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad had also said the budget would entail many sacrifices as the government grappled with reducing more than one trillion ringgit in debts and liabilities it inherited from the previous administration. 
the government has to fix its fiscal finances while improving the well-being of the rakyat, which the government said will take three years. Analysts have said that the budget strategy must be prudential and pro-poor, fair and equitable, and aim to restructure the economy with more meritocracy and competition. Post-14th general election, taxpayers want to feel more confident that their higher taxes will be spent wisely with no room for corrupt and wasteful channels. In the 2018 budget, the previous government announced an allocation of 280.25 billion ringgit for operating and development expenditures. While there is need to reprioritize investments, one of the key challenges included increasing spending efficiency and delivering services with a lower budget. The 2019 budget will also reflect the new government's thinking while showing the way forward as well as an opportunity for an overhaul and reform of the economy, apart from being both inclusive and beneficial to the majority of Malaysians. Now, the introduction of the new tax to be announced in the 2019 budget tomorrow is not intended to burden the people. Deputy Finance Minister Dato Amiruddin Hamza said the tax, which was, which was proposed by the Tax Reform Committee, TRC, is not only meant to rele relieve the government in servicing its mounting debt, but will also help boost the country's development, as well as provide the much-needed assistance to the B40 lower-income group. Kerja yang kita kutip ini, ya, uh, semuanya adalah untuk kita gunakan untuk kita punya apa, operating expenditure, hutang-hutang uh, uh, kalau ada, ya, mungkin sebahagian ini akan kita kita peruntukkan juga untuk membayar hutang, tapi yang yang besarnya untuk memastikan bahawa agenda pembangunan negara, agenda inclusivity, uh, kesenjangan luar bandar dan bandar itu akan dapat kita kembali ya, semula pada. Dato Amiruddin was met at the Inland Revenue Board's Innovation and Integrity Day celebration at Putrajaya earlier today. Previously, Finance Minister Lim Guan Eng was reported to have said that the new tax to generate additional income for the nation will be announced during the tabling of the 2019 budget in the Dewan Rakyat tomorrow. Yeah, so I'd just like to see the cost of living reducing now that there's no SS, uh, sorry, GST. I don't really see the cost of living decreasing that much, so I hope uh, that goes down lah. Because as uh, young graduates, we don't really earn all that much, so it'll be good if the cost of living went down lah. Especially for just simple things like groceries, clothes, um, just any other consumer goods lah, basically. And the thing is, we don't have enough. To, we can't even save up to buy a house because we don't have enough disposable income. So it'll be good if that our salary also increases lah. I think it's been quite stagnant now for a few years already also receive help from the government so but I can see that the government does not provide sufficient scholars to more younger generation because I can see that younger people are especially the one with talent with talents and potential they haven't got the support from the government most of them really need to struggle to find some earnings or allowance for them to support their education and their studies so I hope that the government also can put an effort to help the younger generation to study more, especially in local, local universities. Now coming up, experts push Lion Air crash probe forward. Stay with us.